Let's dig a little deeper. So what is the state of nuclear energy around the world? Earlier I spoke with Matthew Roney, a researcher with the Earth Policy Institute here in Washington. Well, we were supposed to have a nuclear renaissance. About a decade ago, the industry was really touting a new generation of nuclear power, and especially after the Environmental Policy Act of 2005, which put forth a bunch of subsidies and incentives for nuclear generation, new nuclear plants. We had about 30 proposed uh, by 2009, but the vast majority of those have been dropped. Um, investors just aren't interested. Um, so only four of them have gone uh, to the construction stage. And when you say they're not interested, because of the headaches or because of the costs? What is because it? Because of the cost. Uh, nuclear power since the beginning has really run into cost overruns and schedule delays for a number of reasons. Either it's a changing regulatory environment or just because it's a very complex thing to do uh, building nuclear power plants. Um, there's no standard model, and so you're basically starting from scratch each time. That raises costs and the risk to uh, private investors. And so uh, the four that actually are under construction now in Georgia and South Carolina really wouldn't have gone through uh, except for laws in those states that allow the companies to collect uh, fees from their customers before or even during construction. So they get to raise rates even if the plants never actually generate. You had mentioned this renaissance, which apparently is on the skids. Do you sense that it, there's any chance that it might come back? or um, Not given current trends. Uh, this year we've already seen four premature shutdowns. That means before the end of the licensed life of the plant, the operators said, we're not going to do this anymore. And it's mostly for economic reasons. The price of natural gas has gone down dramatically. That's a competing fuel. We also have uh, alternatives like wind and solar uh, that continue to drop in cost as their electricity generation rises. But they're also intermittent, and it's difficult to rely on them all the time, which is one of the issues, and why natural gas, I imagine, has, has done so well. Right. Well, wind and solar, of course, the wind doesn't always blow and the sun doesn't always shine. But we do have uh, nine states in the U.S. that get at least 10 percent of their electricity from wind. Actually, Iowa and South Dakota get about a quarter of their electricity from wind. And Germany's shown us that you can do a renewable grid uh, pretty easily, pretty well. Solar and wind, they're one of the leaders in both. Now, there has been a study that says the industry could double in capacity by 2030 with Asia uh, being a big piece of that. And China, we know, is uh, building a lot of nuclear power plants. Can you bring us up to date there? Sure. Uh, there are about 69 uh, nuclear plants being built around the world, uh, 28 of them in China. So that's the big market to pay attention to. Um, they did stop construction for about a year and a half after the Fukushima uh, incident to check on safety protocols and things like that. But they have restarted some construction since. Um, they did actually just today announce that in three major industrial centers, they're going to ban new coal-fired power plants. And so that may accelerate new nuclear build. Um, it remains to be seen. They're already way behind in schedule on some of the third generation or uh, most advanced reactors that they're building. So we'll have to see whether uh, nuclear can really start to come back up in the world. It may depend a lot on what China does. That was uh, Matthew Roney joining us earlier. Straight ahead on Biz Asia America, we'll have more on how emerging economies are bracing themselves for the scaling back of the U.S. stimulus program and...